Hello and welcome back to NAS Compares and today I want to talk about two and four bay NASs. Which one should you buy and which one's best for you? Because let's face it, it's a tough choice to make for the future. So ultimately, should you buy a two bay or a four bay NAS? Let's take a look. So you've decided to buy your network storage device, but you're stuck at the last hurdle. Should you buy a two bay or four bay network attached storage device? Because there is actually a lot of difference between them. It's not just about storage media. Often you look at the price between a two and four bay device and the price can sometimes be as little as 50 pounds or hundreds of pounds. And it makes you wonder, what makes one better than the other? Surely they're just the same device, but one has four hard drives and the other one has two. But I'm here to tell you there is actually a great deal of difference between them. And today I want to talk about the main differences between two and four bay. Now, a lot of you are gonna watch this and think, no, the real title should be why four bays are better. And I'm not suggesting that, but I am saying that there are many ways in which a four bay is superior. And if you don't think you're gonna take advantage of those superiorities, then go for a two bay, it's fine. But there are lots of ways in which a two and four bay are different that are more than just storage. That said, let's get that one straight out of the way, storage. Obviously, you can store more data on a four bay NAS than you can on a two because you can add more drives, but it's more than that. It's the idea that you can actually spread the cost of your storage over a great deal of time. If either of the devices, two and a four bay, can be populated by just a single hard drive if you want, the software can install on it, and you can utilize a NAS server device with a single hard drive, or if it's a one, four, eight, or even 12 bay NAS storage device. But eventually you're gonna add more drives. So obviously a four bay lets you add more drives over time than a two bay, which only lets you do two. But it's the idea that you can spread each drive, add one drive this year, another next year, and one after that, and the one after that, whereas a two bay, you hit the limitation on two drives. So do bear that in mind when you're choosing between a two and a four bay, particularly if you're buying a device where you're gonna gradually populate it rather than fully populate it from the beginning. Talking of population, we can talk about RAID, redundant array of independent disks or redundant array of inexpensive disks depending on where in the world you grew up. But um, the RAID levels that arrive with a two and four bay actually do differ because a two bay gives you predominantly the three main RAID levels, and technically four. One of them isn't really a RAID, it's called JBOD, just a bunch of disks. And if you install two disks inside, you can see two disks that you can mount as volumes and do all of that. Another one is RAID Zero, where it combines the available storage into one super volume where everyone accessing will only see the one volume. RAID 1 takes both drives and mirrors the data, so you've got an exact duplicate of all your data all the time, and if you lose one drive due to hardware failure, all your data is safe. If you're in a Synology, there is another RAID level called SHR, but that's effectively the same as normal RAID 1. Now, a 4-bay gives you all of those options if you only want to install two drives. But once you go higher than that, a 4-bay does give you more RAID options. It gives you RAID 5. And a RAID 5 lets you write data across all the available disks, so you need at least three. And when a data is written across the first disks, um, the data is written, so a little bit of data, a little bit of data. And on the last disk, something called parity is created, which is kind of like a blueprint of the data on the other disks. When the next wave of data goes across, this time, the data is written across the first and the other disk, but the disk in between, the parity is put there, and so on and so forth. The parity moves from disk to disk with each wipe of data. The result is, if you lose one of your hard disks, then your data can still be reconstructed from all the available data and parity on the remaining disk, and that's the benefit of RAID 5. RAID 6 is another RAID level. RAID 6 is the same thing, but it requires four hard disks, and you have two parities being created instead of one. And finally, you've got RAID 10. RAID 10 is when you have two disks duping against two other disks. It's like a RAID 1 only doubled up. It's a combination of a RAID 0 and a RAID 1 duplicating across them, hence why it's called RAID 10. So these are RAID options that a, a two bay just can't give you. Um, now there is a way in which a two bay can give you those RAID options, and that's with adding an expansion, which is our next area, scalability. Because both a two bay and a four bay, there are lots of examples of being able to add an expansion device, and Synology and QNAP do support them. Uh, the Synology, it's the DX517, and in the QNAP, it's the UX500P and UX800P, and they give you the ability to add more hard drive bays but most four bay devices let you add overall more expansions, often two or more. 
Whereas the two bay device, in most cases, particularly Synology, you can only add just the one expansion. So in terms of scalability, once you're thinking five to 10 years down the line, you get better scalability options with a four bay device. That said, if you don't think you're gonna utilize that many drives over time, this may well not be a factor for you. You can always add one expansion, at least, depending on the device you go for. And while we talk about storage expansions, it is worth talking about price for that storage. Now, like for like, on a four bay and a two bay, if you install hard drives inside, say you, uh, a two bay, you install two 10 TB drives, um, or on a four bay, you install four 5 TB drives, both of them have got 20 terabytes of available storage. But on the two bay, the storage costs less because you only have to buy two drives, although they be, might be more expensive, they aren't that much more expensive that they would be the same as four smaller hard drives. Another example would be four TB hard drives. On a two bay device, you can get two um, eight TB drives. On the four bay, you could buy four four TB drives. Both of them will have 16 terabytes of available raw storage across the disks, but two six TB drives cost less than four four TB drives. So if price per terabyte outside of RAID, so raw is important to you and you're not gonna be raiding them together, the two bay is definitely the better choice. However, the minute you start introducing RAID, the entire thing flips round. Any RAID level on a four bay or a two bay will always result in the price per gigabyte and per terabyte being lower on the four bay. Don't believe me? Go to any store, Span, Amazon Scan, any of them. If you fully populate a four bay device with four TB drives, let's do the same comparison, the price in a RAID 5 or a RAID 10 or a RAID 1 or a, you know all of those RAIDs, the price you pay, so whatever number of terabytes you've got left or gigabytes, divide the cost by that number and the price per gigabyte will be less than if you've got a two bay with two sixes. So in short, outside of RAID, if you don't intend to use a RAID, a two bay is a cheaper cost per terabyte and gigabyte. If you intend to use any RAID level other than RAID zero, four bays will always work out cheaper per terabyte like for like. Now the last area in which we can compare a two and a four bay is to do with ports and access. If you look at most ranges from Synology, QNAP, Asus, Store, Thecus and more, you will notice that two bay and four bay devices in the same range do differ in terms of ports. So most, um, let's look at the QNAP A series, 253A and 453A, very similar indeed, but the four bay arrives with um, two rear mounted fans, it arrives with more USB ports, and it arrives with four gigabit LAN ports. The two bay doesn't have that many of any of those. In the case of the, um, the Synology, the DS718 versus the DS918. The 718 has got two LAN ports, and that's about it. The um, four bay device, the 918, has two LAN ports, but it also has NVMe SSD caching and those front the better quality of hard drive trays. What I'm saying is hardware construction and an available port on a four bay is always better than a two bay. Same goes for any of the two and four bay device that are in the same flagship model series. The bigger the unit, the more space and available power and PSU to deal with so they can add more ports and make the hardware construction quality that bit better. So if that is an important factor to you, then four bays are very well going to be the right choice for you. Does, now, once again, the factors I've talked about today do not definitively say that one is better than the other. This video is not about is four bay better than two bay or is two bay better than four bay. It's about which is best for you. So once again, if money is tight, there are many ways in which a two bay is still going to be the best option for you in the short and the long term. But if you are gonna be increasing the amount of data you create, and that data is very important indeed, a four bay is the better option. The same thing goes for if the, the, the way you're going to access your data is gonna be constantly evolving. Four bays, there are more four bays with PCIe slots, there are more four bays with four LAN ports, there are just more options for four bays compared with two. So if you've got bigger and greater ways that you want to access your data, a four bay is more than likely the way for you, but otherwise a two bay will more than do the job. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, don't forget to click like and subscribe to continue supporting this ch channel. I need to keep these videos going and I need your support to do it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Read the article down below from NAS Compares. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching.
Cheerio.